Hey everyone, in this episode of the new distance matching series, we'll be creating an animation modifier to create a distance curve that'll act as a sort of lookup table in our animation so that we can only play back the frames that we need in the start and stop animations to avoid foot sliding or a sort of floaty unrealistic look. So without further ado, let's get into it. The first thing we're going to do is add some more files into our content browser here. So, I'm going to do new folder, blueprint, and actually I'm going to move that into, oh, I'm going to move the distance matching character into this blueprints folder. And it leaves behind an empty file which we can just delete. It doesn't want to disappear right now, so we'll move on and add a new folder, and we're going to name the folder Animations. We'll open up the folder, and now there are animations linked in the description that you can download, and we're just going to go to the file that they're in and drag them into here. So I have them all selected, and I'm going to drag them all in. I'm going to select the UE4 mannequin skeleton, and I'm going to import all of them. Now we have our running animations, and you'll notice that they're just forward and backward animations, no right or left animations, and that is by intent. I want to try to use orientation warping, and to create right and left animations using orientation warping. If it turns out to be something that I cannot figure out, then I'll link more animations in the description. These animations have been provided by a friend of mine, Ryan, who you'll see is also in the Outcast Dev School Discord server as well, so you can thank him for sharing these animations that he's composited together with us. So. Now we have our animations, and as the title of this video says, we need an anim modifier to create a distance curve. And what that distance curve is, it's a curve that, it's a float curve, it's just a way of handling data. It's for each point in time, for each frame, there's a float value associated with it, that's the distance, the distance that the character has traveled and that is what we're going to be using as a sort of lookup table if you want to think of it that way where we can say okay the character has traveled this far we're stopping we're slowing down we have our predicted point where the character is going to stop how much distance does the character have left until it reaches this point now once we have that we can then use the curve as a sort of lookup table to get the value that we need. So without further ado, let's get started making this animation modifier to create the curve. We're going to go to blueprints, we're going to create a new folder, and we're going to name it anim modifiers. We're going to open it, and we're going to create a new blueprint class, and we're going to select from all classes animation modifier we're going to name this am or no bp underscore am for animation modifier underscore distance curve now we're going to open it up it opened on the other screen so let's bring it in and let's open the full blueprint editor again it opened on my other screen so i'm going to bring it in and now i did the same thing as before i have the entire animation modifier created and i'm just going to walk you through the code so we need three variables our first variable is going to be an anim sequence And we're going to name it, you guessed it, 
Anim sequence. Our second variable is going to be of the type name, and we're going to name it curve name. Our third is also going to be a name variable. It is going to be named bone name. Root bone name, actually. We're going to compile so that we can change the default values of these names. The root bone name is going to be root, all lowercase. And the curve name is going to be distance. Now we're going to get an event and it is going to be an event on apply. Now we're going to set our sequence and I pulled the set off from here by holding alt clicking and dragging control clicking and dragging gets a git node and then alt and drag gives you a set node. It's just a useful shortcut. So we're going to connect these and now we're going to get our curve name. We're going to drag out from here and we're going to get a does curve exist node. And we are getting this because if they've already applied the modifier and if they're trying to apply it again that means they something went wrong or well if you've already applied a modifier and you're trying to apply it again maybe something went wrong maybe there's something wrong in the modifier that you had to go back and change or you didn't um, get something in correctly or maybe i forget something you followed along with me and we have to go back and change it that's we are going to sort of put in the logic so that it will delete and create a new modifier if the modifier has already been applied so we're going to get a branch and this is useful to have um, on every animation modifier that you make it's pretty much universal and i first saw this used in the advanced locomotion system version 4 and i am using pretty much the exact same blueprint code for this beginning does curve exist branch section so if that's true we're going to remove curve and we need our anim sequence and curve name variables. I'm going to connect these together, move them in a bit closer, and I'm going to scoot this whole thing over. Now I'm going to get a reroute node, because if it's false, if the curve doesn't exist, we just want to continue as normal and create the curve. So we want these to join back together if that is the case. So I'm going to get another free route node just to keep things as clean and easy to follow as possible. And I'm going to bring that into an add curve node. I'm just going to copy and paste our variables and plug them in. And now we are at our curve logic for calculating the distance. And that's actually fairly easy. You might have noticed that the animations that we've brought in are root motion animations. We can play back these animations inside of the animation blueprint without root motion, but we can use the root motion to get our distance curves. So, pause. That is where the root bone name variable comes into play. We're going to get a bone pose for frame. And I'm creating this logic separately from over here. We have to bridge them together. And this is just the logic for each frame so that I can explain it as I go here. We need our animation sequence. We need our bone name and this we won't worry about it's just gonna be let's say this is the index the first frame and we're not gonna worry about this extract root motion boolean here we're going to right click on pose split the struct bin drag off from the location and get length
or I think we need to type vector length. Yes. So this float here will be the distance that the the total distance that the root bone has traveled from the current frame. Well, between the first frame and the current frame. And the reason this works is because this is sort of local animation space. The pose location for the root bone on the first frame is zero. It's in its original place. So let's say we're on the second frame. And now let's say the root bone has moved forward one on the X axis. Now we have our pose location of let's say one, zero, zero. We get the vector length or the, in, or the length of the vector. And so if we think of this location vector, this location, um, instead of as a location, as a point in space, we think of it as an arrow with the origin point at zero and the tip of the arrow at the location given, then we can get the length of that arrow and that's the length that the character has traveled. And if you're having trouble understanding or if you're confused, um, there's another YouTube channel called 3 Blue 1 Brown, and it's a fantastic channel for explaining math related things, and he has an entire playlist on vector math. So I will link that in the description, and you can go watch some of that, and you'll have a much better understanding of how to use vectors inside of Unreal Engine and game development. So to continue, this vector length is our distance, but now, well, we can get the distance for a frame, but we need to get the distance at every frame, and to do that, we need a loop, specifically a for loop. Not a for each loop, but a for loop. And now these indexes are going to be our frames. So we're going to get our sequence. And now there's a pure function we can call called get num frames. And it'll just get the number of frames in the animation. We can plug that into last index. So for each frame, being this sort of number here, we can plug into here and get our distance for each and every frame. And so on the loop body, we, we need a add float curve key because we can get our distance variable or distance value but that won't really do anything if we don't have, if we don't add a key with that value onto the curve. Now you notice it also asks for a time. And so we have to convert our frame to time and we can do that by dragging off and getting time at frame. It'll ask for an animation sequence. We can plug in our anim sequence and we can connect this to time we connect our curve name to curve name and we get our animation sequence variable and we connect to these but we're not done yet we need one more function here we're going to drag off from completed and we're going to get a finalized bone animation function we plug in our anim sequence and we can compile and save and now if we get our Let's find our stop animations. There's a backward stop animation. We go to window. We select animation data modifiers. We add a modifier and we're going to add our BPAM distance curve. Apply it. something did not go right. There's our problem. We need to plug index into get time at frame, not number of frames. So it's a case of plugging in the wrong uh, value. And so that's also sort of a side effect of not really having things organized too well here. And that is why you should always organize your blueprints. I did it because I was trying to be fast for the video and it came back to bite me in the butt and now the video uh, got slowed down a bit. So no matter what, organize the blueprints. It's super important. Make sure you can easily follow the your spaghetti lines because 
blueprints um, in their very nature aren't organized. They can be, but it's hard to. Lots of times, if, as things get complex, it gets increasingly harder to organize them. So let's try to re-add this curve. And there we go. We have a distance curve that works. If we play, we can see the as the character gets further from the starting point, the distance and the curve increases in correlation with the distance that the character has traveled. So now all we need to do is go through and add this curve onto all of these start and stop animations. Now that's a bit self-explanatory. You just go, go click this, apply all modifiers. It'll add the curve and I'm going to leave it at that. All right, so there you have it. We have air. Okay, so our distance curves are created and in the next video we'll be creating our second function and the other super important function in this series, the get curve time function, so that our curves can act as the lookup tables that we need them to be for this project. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this and hit the notification bell too while you're at it. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video.